Video coverage, as always, brought to you by Batten Stevens Body Shop in Jewel, Ohio. Visit them on Facebook or BattenStevens.com. These two teams met in the regular season way back on May 12th, and what a game that was. Rams came away with a 1 0 win as senior righty Corbin Castile allowed just one hit. That was a bunt single by Golden Bears leadoff hitter Jace Kepler to start the game. That's the only hit Corbin would allow the entire game as he picked up the 1-0 win. And that happened because in the bottom of the seventh inning, Aiden Mosier singled to center. And after a pickoff attempt went awry on a throwing error, which allowed Mosier to get to second base, Caden Radzik stepped to the plate where the game tied at nothing-nothing. And Radzik sent a Heward pitch into left field, scoring Mosier from second, giving the Rams a thrilling 1-0 last at bat win over Bryan in the regular season game over at Groob Field. Rams come in today at 9-7. Spring Rams were 19-7. Finished tied for second in the GMC. They lost to Ottawa Hills in the sectional finals, 7-1. Ottawa Hills went on to be a state semifinalist. They were runner-up for state this season. So all in all, when you look back at it, if you were knocked out by Ottawa Hills, the Green Bears, not really that bad of a season. 19 and seven Rams definitely exceeded regardless. Spring Golden Bears were 12 and 14. They are three and four in the NWOL. They lost in the district semifinals to Defiance by a score of three nothing. Superintendent over here is Mark Rear, get Brian. High school principal, Stephen Ospal. Athletic director, retired athletic director. Now was Chad Savage, so best of luck to Chad. They are from the NWOAL, and they're Division II normally in baseball. Rams coached by Paul Farrell, assisted by Chris Wittick. Member of those, that name sounds familiar to those. Chris was a member of those state teams I think Chris graduated in 2012, if I recall. Rams are generally coached by head coach Brent Renolette. So wherever you are and however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to tonight's Acme game here from Sumter Field in Bryan. Rams taking on the Golden Bears in game three here in the Bryan District Pool 2 Acme Tournament. I have papers blowing <laughs> everywhere. I just never learned. I print out papers for research and then it's really windy over here. So half of them will go flying out the window. Studio tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair Nail Salon located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Your in-game scoreboard is always Drop Zone Pizzeria in Stryker and Ayersville. Pre-game, signs excavating, video sponsor Batten Stevens, Body Shop in Jewel, Ohio. Stats, BSN Sports, Mr. Jim Gares at BSN Sports. Post-game, Midlack Insurance and Investments, player of the game, and a Rams win. Brought to you by Higby Embroidery, David Falk Weather Forecast. Sunny at 85 here. I'm going to pause for the playing of our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a country where freedom is like no other. In order to honor America, those who have served and those who continue to serve to protect those freedoms, please rise and move your paths to the playing of our national anthem.
playing of our national anthem. Run down the lineups Just quickly here. For the Rams, Mason McCullough will lead off and play at second base. Alex Homeyer will bat second. I think Alex is just an extra hitter. Maybe, actually, Alex is playing at, Paul forgot to put in where Alex is playing. I think Alex is playing at third base. Adam Spicello will be in left field and batting third. Batting fourth, Grady Gusweiler in center. Batting fifth, B.J. Morlock behind the plate. Batting sixth at first base is Riley Peters. Batting seventh in right field, Connor Wolfram. Batting eighth, shortstop is Owen Farrell. Batting ninth, Connor Welling, your D.H. And tenth, Cooper Farrell will be on the mound for the Rams. Defensively, four, the Golden Bears of Bryant. Jake. Kepler will be on the mound. Don Malinga will be behind the plate. First base, Landon Bassett. Second base is Hunter Mufeld. Shortstop, Noah Heward. Lazarus Lane at third base, the hot corner at third. Left field, Cole Uran. Center field is Cade Carlin. And Elijah Fry will be playing in right field. Thanks everybody for joining us on this. Thursday, kind of, <laughs> for those of you who that have to work during the week, like myself and most others, when the 4th of July falls on a Tuesday, basically have two Mondays to your work week, which is absolutely horrible. <laughs> so, most of the week, myself, including probably most of you out there working, listeners that have a regular job, suffer through two Mondays this week, the natural Monday, and then you had... Tuesday to celebrate the 4th of July, and then came back to work on a Wednesday, which felt like a Monday, which Thursday, today, kind of felt like a Tuesday, so you had to kind of relive Monday twice. Coach Chris Whittick coaching at third, first base coach Paul Farrell. Leading off will be Mason McQuillan. Mason playing at second base will be a junior this upcoming season. I'm trying to anchor down my papers as much as I can here. Not sure who the announcer is here, but he has a radio voice. First pitch here at Sumter Field. A little bit low. Ball one. 456. First pitch. 85 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast. Wind blowing. Right field, pitch to McQuillan, foul back. Going from center to right here at Sumter Field. Like I said, Coach Walker, when I saw him for Brian, my favorite place to visit. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on and miss. Kepler ahead of McQuillan, one ball, two strikes, just underway here at Sumter Field. Kepler winds it up. Quillen fouls a bat, stays live. One ball and two strikes to the Rams leadoff hitter, Mason McQuillan. Rams play tomorrow here versus Napoleon at five o'clock. We'll bring that game to you. Kepler winds it up, his one, two pitch. Quillen fouls it back again, stays alive. Foul him straight back. Coach Whittick says, keep working. Quillen, nice looking, well, soon to be junior. Had a great late sophomore season. Pitch to McQuillan, fouled this time. It's fouled off over the Rams first base dugout. Rams on the first base side. And the Golden Bears on the third base side, as always. We'll talk about it as the game progresses. But as I said, one of my favorite spots to visit. Probably the favorite spot. Long look in. Kepler's 1-2 to McQuillan. Just a bit outside, count even at two balls and two strikes. McQuillan wearing number nine on his Acme t-shirt slash jersey. It's more of a t-shirt than a jersey. Two-two pitch coming. Breaking ball is McQuillan right in the back. You could hear that thud. So McQuillan starts off by getting hit right in the middle of the back. Alex Holmeyer batting second. Holmeyer will be at third base. Rams nine and seven. Brian nine and ten on the season. 
District 1 postseason tournament here. Hopefully the Rams can make it to Sunday and play for a state berth. It's a JV. Acme team won the state down in Slinal last Friday. Quillen tries to steal, throw down, goes into center field, stolen base by McQuillan. Not sure if the pitch was more strike. They haven't put it up yet. Look good. I assume it was a strike. Umpires with the red at Acme. Looks nice look. Kind of like the old Major League umpires used to wear red. That pitch was a strike. Kepler steps off, chases McCullen back. Rams with the runner at second base. Nobody out here in the top of the first inning. Kepler from the stretch. Pitch inside. I have a crowd mic right below the Golden Bears dugout. You can hear the cleats against the concrete. Just a few Fridays away from Friday Night Football. Six, I think. Wow. Hohmeyer laces it in the right field gap. Or to cut it off is Fry rounding third, heading home is Mason McQuillan. McQuillan scores, standing up for the first run of the contest. Rams on top. 1-0 RBI single by Alex Hohmeyer. Going to bring up Adam Spicella. Adam be a junior this season once the school season starts. Adam batting third. Playing in left field for Coach Farrell. First pitch by Kepler is fouled off for the first base side. And for those of you just tuning in, we'll reset the Golden Bear defense when we have a chance. Battery mate, the battery is Kepler and Dom Malanga. Throw to first base back safely is Homeyer. Landon Bass is first for the Golden Bears. Arm Ufeld at second. Noah Hewards at short. Lazarus Lane at third. Cole Uran in left. Pete Carlin in center. And Elijah Fry is in right for Brian. 0 1 pitch. Lines. No. Soft liner back through the box to second for the force out. Shortstop Heward flipped it over to Mufeld for the first out. Retiring Holmeyer at second for out number one. So Spicella is on at first base on the fielder's choice, 6-4 on the putout. Cleanup hitter, center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. Grady, familiar number 25 on the back of his Tenor baseball green jersey, t-shirt slice jersey. Chase Kepler from the stretch, first pitch, fouled back. That's probably fouled off a dozen pitches here in the first inning off Kepler. Not going to find a better overall center field in Northwest Ohio than the uh, gentleman at the plate right now, Grady Gusweiler. Grady, make a look on YouTube, Facebook, and that's just the ones we caught on video. Doesn't mention the ones that we didn't catch on video. Just a highlight reel in center field out there. Pitch to Grady. A little bit low, count evens. One ball, one strike, one out. Rams on top, one nothing. Here is a bat in the top of the first inning over here at Sumter Field in Bryan. RBI single by Alex Homeyer. Put the Rams on top. Adam Spicella over at first. Throw over there just back. Was Spicella. Gus Weiler bats from the right side of the plate. Kepler pitches from the far first base side of the mound. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two call to Grady. Fantastic catch during the regular season over at Kaleida. During the Acme season against Defiance a couple weeks ago. Had another one just as good as that one. Didn't get that one on video, though. 1-2 pitch to Grady. A little bit late. Line shot off the first base fence over there. Right in front of Josh and Carla. Over there. Josh is smart. Brought the Ohio State Buckeye sun tent. Brooklyn's going to try and get the ball, but it's inside the fence. There goes the runner. Swung on and fouled at the plate. One, two, the count to Grady. One out. Runner at first. There's Adam Spicella. Rams on top one. Nothing here. They bat in the top of the first inning. That's why they're back in the box. Kepler with the sign from the stretch. Pitch to Grady. Fouled back again. 
Count stays one and two. Hey, win the fight here. Come on. Way ahead. Don't give in. Kepler's one two pitch steps off. Those the first base back with the head first dive in the first base as Adam Spike Thanks everybody for tuning in back on our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit subscribe on that. We have all our football back on YouTube. Another throw over to first base. This one gets away from the first baseman. Bassett heads down the line. Spicella gets up, <laughs> slips. <laughs> you think he stepped on top of second base and slipped off the bag. So Spicella goes down to second on the throw. Air on the pitcher, E1. Grady back in the box. One and two is the count to Gus Weiler. Spicella now down at second base. Long look in. Kepler gets the sign. Comes set. One, two pitch coming from Gus Weiler. Or two Gus Weiler. Swung on and missed. Strike three. In frustration, Brady hits the bat against the ground. That's the second out. Going to bring up B.J. Morlock. B.J. will be behind the plate for the Lady Rams. Cooper Fair will be on the hill for tomorrow when they take the field. We're in our second two outs now. Rounds with a single tally here on the top of the first. Look to add one more. Pitch to Warlock from Kepler. Strike on the inside corner. Rams in the Hunter Green jerseys with the gray pants and the green helmets. Brian in like a, kind of a Houston Astros looking jersey with stripes across the chest with Brian in yellow with purple at the top. Pitches low. One ball, one strike to BJ. He steps out, gets the sign from third base coach Chris Wittick. Coach Farrell coaching at first. Kepler's 1-1 one, one pitch coming to B.J. Morlock. Swung on it and missed strike two. One ball, two strikes to the Rams. Number five hitter, B.J. Morlock. Riley Peters awaits on deck for Tenora. Kepler long look in. Looks back at second. One, two pitch to the plate. Change up, just misses. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. 68 miles an hour. We to, forgot we had the speed gun over here. 68 miles an hour on the changeup from Kepler. That's <laughs> pretty impressive, actually. Kepler's 2 2 come with the Morlock. Morlock just has a hit stolen by the second baseman. Hunter Mulefeld with a lunge behind second base. Gathered himself, fired over to first base to get Morlock. Heck of a play by the Golden Bears second baseman to retire the Rams. Morlock is out 4-3. That retires the Rams here in the top of the first inning. However, they do get one run on one hit, one error, and one left on base. Bottom of the first inning coming up here from Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Throw a one, and the Golden Bears coming to bat. The Adam Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Batten Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here at Sumter Field. Rams with a one nothing lead as Brian comes to bat in the bottom of the first inning. 
Defensively for the Rams, Cooper Farrell will be on the mound. B.J. Morlock behind the plate. Riley Peters at first, Mason McCullen at second. Owen Farrell is at short. Alex Holmeyer is at third. Adam Spicella is in left. Grady Gus Weiler in center. Connor Wolfram is in right. Connor Welling will be the DH slash extra hitter for the Rams. For the Golden Bears, Noah Heward will lead off and play short. Cole Uran batting second and in left. Lazarus Lane batting third. He is the third baseman. Batting cleanup, Jace Kepler. Kepler on the mound. Batting fifth is the DH, Damian Muse. Batting sixth, Landon Bassett. He's at first base. Batting seventh, Kate Carlin in center field. Batting eighth, Elijah Fry in right field. Extra hitter is Hunter Mufeld, who made a heck of a play. Right there to end that first inning by Mufeld. <laughs> I mean, Grady Gusweiler, some props there for his plays this spring. And I guess uh, it's probably the second best play this summer I've seen there by was Mufel. Farrell on the mound for the Rams. First pitch to Heward. A little bit outside. Ball one. Think about it. Acme, summer ball. I don't see the typical numbers that you see during the spring. Heward got 68 on his back. Pitches inside from Farrell. Two balls and no strikes from Cooper Farrell. Farrell with number one on his back, and I think no he doesn't wear one. Whoa, ball three. And on the grass at third base for the Rams is Alex Holmeyer. Farrell's 3-0. Strike called. You were to square on the bump, brought the bat back. Ooh, gust of wind here. The camera's shaking a bit. That's what it is. Right behind me, 3-1 pitch from Farrell to Heward. It's a break in between the 6 and the 8. So Heward starts out by getting hit in the back as well. Same as McQuillan. So Heward down the first base to start the Golden Bears' bottom of the first inning. Rams on top, 1-0. Courtesy of an RBI single by Alex Omeyer. Cole Uran steps in. Uran batting second in left field. Where's number 95 on his summer Acme jersey? Farrell from the stretch. First pitch. Straight cold. Cooper be a junior this incoming school season, the start of school. Closer than one would think. Seems like the kids just got out. So close to the middle part. Farrell fires over to first base. Ball gets away from Peters and heads down the line. Peters races after it. Heward hits the bag a second. He's going to head to third. Throw over. Gets away from Holmeyer. Nice backup by Spicella. Holmeyer gathers that. I think they get Heward out by about three feet. Unfortunately, on the error on the throw by Farrell. Heward goes all the way to third. E1. No balls. And one strike to Uran. Runner in scoring position with nobody out for Brian. Trying to tie the game up. Uran is hit on the elbow. So back to back hitters hit by Farrell. Uran trots down the first base. Golden Bears with runners at first and third. Nobody out. <laughs> Going to bring up the number three hitter, Lazarus Lane. Lane at third base for Brian. Morlock goes out to talk to Farrell. And with Delta dropping out of the tournament, the Rams actually got a win yesterday. So it's Nora's one and one and zero. Oh. Brian lost to Napoleon by a score of nine to one. So the Golden Bears come in at zero and one. Long look in. Farrell's pitch to Lane. High fly ball, shallow. Left field out, about 10 feet on the outfield grasses. Rams freshman shortstop, Owen Farrell, to put it away. So Lane's retired for the first out. 
Oh, pick up the sign and be smart. Number four hitter, Jace Kepler, steps in. Kepler, number 86 on this pack. Some of these numbers are funny. It says Summer Ball. Basically, Acme is kind of a preview of your next year's team. Some of the boys play travel ball. But outside of one or two per team, what you see in summer Acme ball is what you'll see for the next spring. Runners at first and third, one out for Brian. Farrell's pitch coming to Kepler. He throws over to first base back with the head first dive is Uran. Uran at first, Heward at third for Brian. Brian nine and 10 this summer. Rams nine and seven. Farrell's pitch. To Kepler, he bunts it foul, first base side. Holmeyer on the grass at third for Tenora. Peters pulling the runner on at first. Humidity dropped finally again this afternoon. Humidity in the last two days in Northwest Ohio has been through the roof. Farrell comes set, his 0-1 pitch coming to Kepler. Just a bit inside, count evens at a ball and a strike. We'll be at Sonora in about, like I said, about five weeks for the scrimmage. Elmwood will be over. Scrimmage the Rams. Farrell comes set. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Kepler. There goes the runner. Morlock fakes. Now he throws down. Stolen base by Uran. Kind of a bizarre throw there by BJ. I don't know if he tried to throw around Kepler. Regardless, Golden Bears have runners at second and third with one out. Two and one is the count to Jace Kepler. Kepler on the mound for Brian. Hitting cleanup. Farrell's asking if that was not bad or interference. It was kind of a bizarre throw for BJ. So Paul comes out, converses briefly with the home plate umpire, and that is always 99% of the time the call stands. So Heward at third, Urane at second for Brian Farrell's pitch, just a bit inside and does nip Kepler. Third batter to get hit in the inning for Farrell. Timeout on the field. Coach Paul Farrell. I'm going to go out and talk to Cooper Farrell. Joined by the infield. So bases full of Golden Bears. One out here in the bottom of the first inning. Rams on top, one nothing. Golden Bears threatening to add some heavy damage here. To Coach Farrell. Calm Cooper down a bit. Damien Wolf will step in. Wolf, the DH. Batting for Domalinga, the Golden Bear catcher. <laughs> <laughs> the Wolf steps in, bats from the right side, wears number 15 on the back of his summer Acme jersey. Farrell works out of the windup with the bases loaded. Pitch, just a bit outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes, one out. Out of the first inning. One nothing to Nora. Courtesy of an RBI single by Alex Holmeyer. Farrell now works out of the set position. This one's fouled back by Wolf. One ball, one strike, one out. Holmeyer about three feet inside the dirt part of the infield here. Peters, the cut of the grass at first base. Change up inside. Wolf leans out of the way. Two balls and one strike. 60 on the change up from Farrell. Long look in. Farrell gets the sign from Morlock. Comes set. His 2 1 pitch. Tap third base side. Homeyer to home for the force out. No play for Morlock. So the Rams force out Heward at the plate for out number two. Nice play by Tora third baseman Alex Homeyer. 
5-2 on the put out for out number two basis remain loaded. Reigns now at third, Kepler is at second. And Wolf on at first. Brandon Bassett steps in. Bassett, number six hitter, plays at first base. Pitch to Farrell line right back through the box in the center field for a base hit. Scoring is Uran. Here comes the second runner. Scoring is Kepler. Golden Bears on top, two to one here on the bottom of the first inning. Stopping a second was Wolf. Bassett with a two RBI single. Puts the Golden Bears on top. Number seven here, Cade Carlin. So the three hit batters come back to haunt Tenora and Cooper Farrell. Pitch to Carlin, swung on and miss. Carlin batting seventh, playing in the center field for Brian. There's number nine on his summer jersey. Farrell from the set position fires a strike on the outside corner. Cooper ahead. No balls and two strikes. When out blowing ever so slightly in from center field. Farrell's 0 2 to Carlin. Strike. Three called. Carlin goes down looking. In the inning for the Golden Bears, they get two runs. And they do so on one hit, one Ram throwing error, and two Bears left on base. We're through one. They're at Sumter Field in Bryant. Golden Bears two. And the Snore Rams one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things Clubhouse Pizza in A has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street in Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. Top of the second inning here at Sumter Field. Tora going to send six, seven, and eight. Peters, Connor Wolfram, and Owen Farrell to face Chase Kepler. Hey, July 7th. Not doing anything? Sign up for the Black Swamp Football Golf Outing. Cost is $300 for a foursome. That includes lunch and two drink tickets per player. That is Friday, July 7th. It's in Wauseon at the Ironwood Golf. The papers go flying, and now I try and save the papers from flying by putting my drink on it, and now my drink spills. Win, win. <laughs> Get a hold of Lynn Grohl. Just go to blackswampfootball.com or just get a hold of Lynn on Twitter or Facebook or if you want to email him, just email Lynn at blank, black swamp FB at gmail.com. So, you want to kill a Friday with your buddies tomorrow? A little Lynn ASAP. First pitch to Peters, as my scorebook is saturated, <laughs> is a ball. It happened to me during the spring, and I still can't get a couple of my keys on my laptop to work. Luckily, one is a V. Second pitch to Peters is ball two. <laughs> so, by typing up a postgame article or whatnot, I just kind of typed the wrong word with the V, and it just autocorrects most of the time. Kepler's pitch inside, three balls and no strikes is the pitch from or the count to Peters. Kepler on the mound for Brian. Chase Kepler winds it up. His 3-0 pitch to Riley Peters. High and away, ball four. Peters works a leadoff walk. Riley trucks down the first base. 2-1 Brian here in the top of the second inning over here at Sumter Field. Beautiful facility. Gonna bring up Connor. Wolfram, Connor playing in right field for Coach Farrell. Connor bats from the right side. Kepler's pitch to Wolfram, strike called. No balls and a strike 
count to soon to be senior Connor Wolfram. Third baseman, as we're laying in at the cut of the grass, throw to first base, Peters with a head first dive. Kepler's pitch. Nice stop by Malanga. Save the wild pitch. Old Peters at first base. I'm going to try and salvage some papers here. Quickly as I can. <laughs> so if anybody wants to golf, get a hold of Lynn, which is one of the papers that got ruined. <laughs> pitch to Wolfram is fouled back. One ball, two strikes to Connor Wolfram. You've never been over here to Brian. To the park. Probably he's one of the best parks in pff, definitely in Northwest Ohio. If not the state of Ohio. Pitches fouled at the plate. Count stays the ball and two strikes. Nobody out runner at first here in the top of the second. Rams trail two to one. But well maintained, beautiful facility over here. Baseball, softball. Recently we did the softball field behind us. Chris Malang and his crew generally covered Brian Golden Bears. Athletics do a great, fantastic job. Kepler's 1-2 pitch coming to Connor. Spins him out of the way, just misses on the inside corner. Two balls and two strikes. All right, get it out right here. Coach Farrell at first base for Tenor, Chris Wittick. Remember of those fantastic final four teams coaching at third. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Wolfram. Kepler's pitch just misses. Count goes full at three and two. Chase wanted that one. Malenga behind the plate. Bassett at first. Mufeld, who made a heck of a play last inning at second. Heward at short and Lazarus Lane at third for Brian. Pitch to Connor. Guide. Foul territory. First base side. First baseman heading over that way. Landon Bassett can't make the play. Elijah Fry coming in from right field. They both met at the ball, which had already landed right in front of the light pole down there in right field. Outfield for the Golden Bears. Coley ran in left. Dade Carlin's in center, and Elijah Fry, as I said, is in right. Pretty much straight up for Connor Wolfram. Payoff pitch coming to Connor. Inside, ball four. Wolfram trots down the first base with the walk. Back-to-back -back walks put runners at first and second for Tenora. Peters at second. Wolfram at first. That's going to ring with number eight hitter, Owen Farrell. Owen, fantastic looking shortstop for the Rams. Shortstop in two years. Once Caden Radzik graduates, Caden be a senior this upcoming season. Pitches inside to Owen. Ball one. Kepler lost control here in the on, second inning. Thanks everybody for joining us here on Snow Rams Live on this Thursday evening now. Ewers pitch. Ball two. Kepler's walk two. He's behind on Owen Farrell. No balls. Or two balls and no strikes. Kepler from the set position. 2-0 pitch to Owen Farrell. Strike called. Two balls and a strike to Owen. On deck for the Tenor Rams is Connor Welling. Welling DHing. Acme can have extra hitter, so some teams use it. Have 10 hitters. 2-1. Ground ball, shortstop side. Steps on second base, fires over to first base in time for the double play. Ground ball to Heward a short. Taylor made double play. Heward fielded, took a couple steps, stepped on second base, fired over to first base to Landon Bassett to complete the twin killing. And just like that, there's two outs. Connor Welling steps in. Peters over to third. 6-4 on the double play, and the pitch to Welling, and Connor gets hit, so he's going to trot down the first base, putting runners for Tenor at first and third here in the top of the second inning. Golden Bears lead 2-1. to one. 
Top of the lineup, Mason McQuillan. Uh, Cooper, I guess Cooper's not going to bat. They haven't been in the lineup, but Mason McQuillan actually is at the plate. A little delayed steal by Tenora. Connor Welling fires or trots down to, I guess, jogs down to second base. They tried to get caught in a rundown and trying to score Peters from third. Did not work. Pitch was a ball to McQuillan. Pitch to McQuillan. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Mason. Mason was hit by a pitch, stole the base, and scored in the first inning. So Farrell's on the mound. Wellings must be DHing for Farrell. Kepler's pitch to McQuillan. Strike on the inside corners. Two balls and a strike to Mason. Mason. Fantastic looking sophomore season. Take over a second base for Eli Plosman. And providing he can keep his cap on, be a fantastic mound addition for Coach Renolette this, I guess, next spring. That was a pitch was a ball. Three balls and a strike to Mason McQuillan. Alex Holmeyer waits on deck. Rounds have runners at second and third. Two outs. 3-1 pitch from Kepler to Mason McQuillan. Ball four, he thought. Not so fast, says the home plate umpire. Mason took a couple steps to first base. A little delayed call there. Called a strike. Count is full to Mason. 3-2 pitch coming from Jace Kepler. He comes set. Comes to the plate. McQuillan taps it back to Kepler. Kepler fires over to first base in time to get McQuillan. 1-3 on the putout. That ends the Rams. Had an uprising. Was slowly put up by that double play by Noah Heward. In the inning for Sonora, no runs. No hits. No errors. And two left on base. We're through an inning and a half over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Golden Bears of Bryan, two. And the Tenor Rams, one. We'll be back right after this time out. Van Stevens, Stevens Body. Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. What an Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call, 419-784-9880, or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com, or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say, go Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back at Sumter Field, bottom of the second inning we go. Brian on top, two to one, courtesy of a two-run single by Landon Bassett last inning. Both teams have had scoring opportunities right and left. Rams had two on with nobody out. And Owen Farrell with a ground ball up the middle. Looked like it was headed to center field. Unfortunately, Noah Heward snagged it. Stepped on second, fired over to first base to complete the double play. Rams had runners at second and third. A couple batters later, and Mason McQuillan with a topper. It wasn't an easy play by Kepler by no means, but Kepler hopped off the mound. Ran in about three or four steps, scooped up the ball, fired over to first base just to nip Mason McQuillan at first. For Brian, eight, nine, and one. Elijah Fry, Hunter Mufelt, and top lineup scheduled Noah Hewer to face Cooper Farrell. First pitch is a strike. Can't worry about the wind driving my camera and taking it out the window, quite honestly. Kind of strong behind me. Oh, one pitch to Fry is a little bit low. One ball and one strike. Trust me, I've seen anything and everything happen with wind involving electronics while doing this the last five, six years. Pitch is just a bit inside. Two balls and a strike to the number eight hitter. Right fielder, Elijah Fry. Farrell winds up. Two, one to Fry. 
Swung on and missed. Nice change up by oh, Cooper. Throwback goes over the head of Farrell. McQuillan comes on. Fires it back to Cooper Farrell. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. Brian on top, 2-1. Farrell's pitch bends Fry out of the way. It's going to say Nick the shoulder. Home play umpire says no, it didn't. Farrell hit three batters in the first inning. Just contributed to the 2 1 lead by Brian. Full count pitch coming by Farrell. 3 2 pitch. This one's inside, ball four. Fry. Down the first base goes Elijah to start the Golden Bears second inning. Hunter Mewfield steps in and what a play by Mewfield in that top of the first inning. One of the better plays we've seen this summer. Runner at first, nobody out. Farrell from the stretch comes to the plate. Mewfield squirrels her on the bunt, brings the bat back, pitches outside. Ball one, nice stop by B.J. Morlock. No activity yet in the Rams bullpen. It's probably gonna happen. Farrell's 1 0 to Mufeld, squares her on the button, blunts it right behind the plate foul. Count evens at a ball and a strike. We'll be back here tomorrow. Rams take on Napoleon. And the Bryan district. Pool two bracket over here. We don't have a winner or losers bracket because Delta dropped out. One one. Farrell fires over to first base. Back with the head first dive is Elijah Fry. So it's going to take best record. And if there's a tie, they said they're going to take runs allowed. There goes the runner throw by Morlock down. Not in time. Fry in with the stolen base for the Golden Bears. What? Mr. Mufeld, I think it was a ball inside. Two balls and a strike to number nine hitter, second baseman Hunter Mufeld. Mufeld bats from the right side. Farrell comes set to one. Mufeld bumps a first base side foul. Peters tried to scoop it up before it went foul, could not do so. Count goes even to Hunter Mufeld, two and two. Thanks for joining us. So we're Rams Live, Keith Brown here. Shook off the rust. About six weeks off from play by play. Two two pitch. Farrell steps off, fakes the throw to second, back safely as Elijah Fry for the Brian Golden Bears. Nobody out, runner a second. Brian on top, 2-1, they bat here in the second. Pitch swung on and miss. Throw back to second by Morlock, not in time. Fry is back safely. Mufeld down swinging, comes the first out. Top of the lineup, Noah Hewart. Hewer was hit by a pitch in the first. What's a second on an air by the pitcher on a pickoff attempt? And just a Hewer sails behind him. Down to third base goes Elijah Fry on the wild pitch. The so Fry's a third with one out. One ball, no strikes. It's the count to uh, Noah Hewer. But Sonora will be here tomorrow versus Napoleon. Wildcats 16 and 1. Rams actually played a doubleheader versus Napoleon about three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Hit the glove. Double, yeah, they thought it was a double hit. Don't have catcher's interference. So Heward goes down to first base on the catcher's interference. So runners at the corners. Left fielder, number two hitter, Cole Uran steps in. Uran was hit by a pitch, stole the base, and scored a run in the first. Fires at the corners for Brian. One out. Farrell going to pitch out of the stretch position. Cooper comes set. Pitch to Uran. Steps off, fakes a throw to first and third. Yeah. 
Farrell's pitch, there goes the runner. Throw by Morlock down over the head. Another shortstop into score from third for Brian. On the air is Elijah Fry for Brian's third run. Down the second goes Heward. Air on the throw by Morlock. E2 allows the runner to score from third. 3-1 Brian here in the bottom of the second. One ball, no strikes to count to Heward. Farrell comes set. Rams infield in at the... Oh, everybody's in. It's going to say in at the corners, but middle infield in as well. Pitch was fouled off. One ball, one strike, one out. Was the ball about count to Heward? Yeah. Hey, that's what's called. No matter where it is, you got to swing that. Heward's at third. Strike is the pitch to Cole Uran. You're good. One ball and two strikes. One out runner at third is Noah Heward. 3 1. Golden Bears on top as they bat here in the bottom part of the second. Check swing. Foul tipped in the glove, it sounded like. So you ran down on strikes regardless for out number two. Second strikeout for Cooper Farrell. Or third strikeout by Farrell. It's going to bring up Lazarus Lane, the number three hitter and third baseman. Pitch to Lane is a bit outside. Ball one. Lane popped out to Rams shortstop Owen Farrell in shallow left field his first time up. Nice play by Farrell. Cooper Farrell's pitch to Lane as ball two. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Runner at third is Noah Heward. He would reach on catcher's interference. Don't really see that too much. 2-0 pitch from Farrell to Lane. Oh, Tapper to the mound. Farrell bobbles it, scoops it up, fires it. Not in. Oh, in time. Nice stretch by Peters. But it appeared that Lane beat that out. But the umpire said, no, you didn't. One, two, or one, three on the put out for the third out. In the inning for the Golden Bears, they put a run on the board. They do so without a hit. Another Rams there. And runner left at third for Brian. We're through two over here in the B side of the District 1 pool two bracket game three. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard shows Brian three and Tenora one. Top of the third coming up right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Top of the third we go. Here at Sumter Field. Golden Bears on top, three to one. Two, three, and four for the Rams. Holmeyer, Spicello, and Gus Weiler to bat against Jace Kepler. Don't forget, tomorrow, still got time. Get a hold of Lynn Grohl. Head over there to the Black Swamp Golf Outing. It's at Wasion, the Ironwood Golf Club in Wasion. $300 for your foursome. Lunch, two drink tickets. Nine o'clock start. Get a hold of Lynn on Twitter at Black Swamp Football or Lynn Grohl. Or do the same on Facebook, Black Swamp Football or Lynn Grohl. You can email them at blackswampfb at gmail.com. Pitch to Holmeyer with a strike. Holmeyer with a RBI single in the first. Played the first run of the game. Just missed on the inside corner. One ball in, one strike. So get a hold of Lynn if you're not doing anything tomorrow. 
Call in sick. Take four of your buddies out. Golf with some great coaches. Pitch! Slammed in the hole. Deep throw by Heward. Not in time. <laughs> Still a nice play deep in the hole by Noah Heward. Not in time to get Homeyer. So Homeyer legs out an infield single. Alex on it first to start the Rams' third inning as the Rams trail by two. Three to one here. Going to bring up the number three hitter, left fielder Adam Spicella. Let's go, Jace. Spicella reached on the fielder's choice in the first. First pitch hit right back off the glove of Heward. Heward loses the cap, picks up the ball, throw to first base. Not in time off the glove of first baseman Landon Bassett. Nice effort too by Kepler. Hey, you can step on it over here, Lance. Oh, I think Kepler thought it may have been hit harder than what it was. Put the glove out, closed it, and hit off the side of the glove. Bounced to the first base side. He raced after it, lost the cap, and <laughs> fell down to his knees. Fired over to first base. Ball hit off the glove of Bassett as well, but an infield single for Tenora. Going to put runners at first and second. So Spicella is on at first. Holmeyer is on at second. Grady Gusweiler to the plate. Gusweiler squares around the bunt. Pitch is called a strike. Gusweiler hitting in the number four spot, playing in the center field, struck out his first plate appearance. Kepler with the sign. 0 1 pitch coming to Grady. Long look in. Now comes set. Pitch. Bit outside, just misses. Ball on the strike. Rouse trail 3-1 to one here in the top of the third. Golden opportunity. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Kepler comes set. 1-1 one, one coming to Gusweiler. Squares around the bunt. Bunts it foul over near the Rams dugout. Gusweiler down in the count of ball and two strikes. B.J. Morlock on deck for Tenora. Again, congratulations to the Rams Junior Acme team with a 15-4 win. That was in six innings or Fort Recovery last season, or last season, last Friday, to get the Junior Acme Baseball Championship coached by Ryan Snyder. So congratulations to Coach Snyder and the Junior Acme Rams for bringing home the state junior title a week ago. That was at Salina. Pitch to Grady is high and away. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody out. Rams trail three to one here in the top of the third on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Kepler comes set, looks back at the runners. Pitch to Gusweiler, change up, strike, three called. Grady goes down looking. Second strikeout for Gusweiler. That's the first out. I'm going to bring up B.J. Morlock. Morlock 0 for 1, grounded to second. And that was, as he said, a heck of a play by Mufeld to end the Rams' first inning. Otherwise, they'll put a couple more on the board. Runners lead from first and second. Big lead over there at first base by Spicella. Pitch to Morlock, leans him back, ball one. Homeyer is second. It's by Chella at first. More luck at the plate. One ball and no strikes. Kepler comes set. Pitched him BJ. Leans him back again. Two balls and no strikes. Timeout on the field. Golden Bears acting head coach. Uh, head out there and have a conversation. Well, it's kind of cool about Acme. Sometimes you see some of the seniors are the coach of the Acme program. Otherwise, in the case for the Lady or the Lady Rams, the Tenora Rams have a couple of their JV coaches coaching Acme. BJ goes down to have a conversation with third base coach Chris Wittick. So, Coach Wittick, the BJ. Still conversing. BJ now heads back to the dish. Conversation is over. For the Golden Bears. Two balls and no strikes. One out. Rams have runners at first and second here. BJ Morlock's at the plate. Jace Kepler comes set. 
2-0 pitch coming to Morlock. Wheels fakes a throw back to second base, chases Homelier back. Okay, don't creep too much. Kepler's 2-0 pitch coming to Morlock. Another step off and fake throw, this time to first base by Kepler. Had a big lead, actually, over there by Spicella. First Mason Bassett snuck in behind him. No throw. Kepler comes set. 2-0 pitch coming to Morlock. Strike called to BJ. Two balls and one strike. One out. Rams trail 3-1 here in the top of the third over here at Sumter Field. 2-1 pitch coming to BJ. Kepler fires. A little bit low. 3-1. Rams. Taylor home away from home in the mid 90s or mid 90s, mid 2000s. And they on their way to four straight Final Four appearances 11, 12, 13, and 14. This was their first stop. It was the districts here in Bryan. 3 1 pitch is a little bit low. Ball four. That loads them up. So Holmeyer goes down to third, Spicella to second. B.J. Morlock's on it first. That's going to bring up number six hitter, first baseman, Riley Peters. But in the Rams. Final four appearances, they headed from here. Then they went over to Hamler to complete their final four. Peters, ground ball to first base. First baseman knocks it down, picks it up. Bassett steps on the bag, but that's going to score a run. Scoring is Homeyer. Cut the Rams lead to 3-2. Three to three to two. RBI by Peters. Runners move up. Spicella down to third. Morlock down to second. That's three unassisted on the ground out for out number two. Going to bring up Connor Wolfram. Connor walked in the second. He laces one right at the left fielder, Cole Uran. That's the hardest hit ball we've seen today. Unfortunately for Connor, he smoked it right at Uran. That's the third out. F7 on that. In the inning for Tenora, they put a run on the board. They do so with a hit. No errors. And Rams leave two more. They've left five. We're through two and a half here over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Golden Bears three. And it's Nor Rams two. And Acme Summer Ace Ball Tournament. Here in District 1, Pool 2. We'll be back right after this here on your Drop Zone Pizza Area Scoreboard. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Bottom of the third we go for Brian, four, five, and six to face Cooper Farrell. Golden Bears, three, Tenora, two. Here in the bottom of the third, like we said, Connor Wolfram with a rope. Hardest hit ball we've seen here today. Unfortunately, hit a right at Golden Bears left fielder, Cole Uran. Kepler will step to the plate. Was hit by a pitch and scored a run in the first. Faces counterpart Cooper Farrell. Kepler, Wolf, and Bassett will face Farrell. Farrell struggled with control here so far. Although he's allowed just one hit, but Bryant's had base runners all over the place. Kepler, as we said, to see some of the summer numbers that are rather bizarre at times. Kepler with 86 on his summer jersey. Some players like to wear their football numbers during summer baseball. Others just like to wear their regular spring number. 
Let's go, Ted. So Kepler steps in, bats from the right side. Come on, Kip. Get out of here, bro. Cooper Farrell. Incoming junior right-hander on the mound. Winds it up. First pitch to Kepler. Swung on ground at third base side. Scooped up by Alex Omeyer. Throw across to Peters in time to get Kepler. 5-3 on the put out. Going to bring up Damian Wolf. Wolf is DHing for the catcher. Domalanga. Every time you hear the name Malanga, you can't give enough thanks to Chris and the fantastic job he does over here at Brian on the Golden Bears Network. First pitch swing, another ground ball to Holmeyer. This one, he tries a short hop, but he can't. Wolf is on with an air. E5 be the second or third air. Probably, I think the third air for the Rams here so far. I think had Holmeyer just waited another split second, he could have got the little in-between hop there. It's one of those plays you darned if you do, darned if you don't. Going to bring up Bassett. Landon Bassett, number six hitter, playing at first base, had a two RBI single in the first inning. Golden Bears on top three, two here in the bottom of the third. Runner at first, one out. Farrell's pitch inside. Change up 58 by Cooper Farrell. Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. A little story about 2014 season over here at Sumter Field. We had an extra lengthy period. Deep drive. Given Chase is the Rams left fielder. Adam Spicelli puts it away. Retiring Bassett in left center field. Nice play by Adam for out number two. Chasing back to first base is Damian Wolf for Brian. It's going to break the number seven hitter, the center fielder, Cade Carlin. Farrell from the stretch. Long look in. Now looks over the runner at first. Wolf comes set. Pitch to Carlin is fouled back. More lot giving chase. It's out of play. Bottom of the third, 3-2 Golden Bears. Each team has two hits. Rams. I actually think they give a hit to who? Wolf on that play. Fouled off, first base side. Farrell quickly ahead of Carlin. No balls and two strikes. They're over to first base, just back ahead of the tag was Damian Wolf. Elisha Fry on deck for Brian. Farrell's 0-2 to Carlin. Here it comes. High and inside. Over the head of Carlin. At least he leaned out of the way. A ball and two strikes. Windows died down. At least outside the ballpark. Inside here. Papers somewhat dried off from the spilled drink from earlier. Pitch almost identical inside, leans Carlin back again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at first for Brian. As Damian Wolf, Golden Bears with a 3-2 lead. Over here in pool play. An Acme baseball. 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Farrell to Carlin. Soft liner into left field, falls in front of... Spicella, Adam scoops it up on a hop, fires it in, not before. Wolf gets down to second base and Kate Carlin's on it first. Golden Bears threatening, runners at first and second. Two outs, gonna bring up number eight header, the right fielder, Elijah Fry. Fry walks, stole the base and scored in the second. Farrell comes set. Looks back at the runner a second. Pitch to the plate. Change up stays inside. Just misses. One ball and no strikes to Elijah Fry. Hunter Mufeld on deck. Pitch just misses outside. Two balls and no strikes to Elijah Fry. Fair 
Carroll comes set. 2-0 to Fry. Inside, ball three. Anytime you hear the name Fry, you automatically, for us old schoolers, think to Ferris Bueller. Fry. 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 <laughs> Cameron Fry. Not in that day. 3-0 pitch to Elijah Fry. It is ball four. So Elijah trots down the first base. That's going to load him up. Wolf goes down the third. Carlin will head to second. And Elijah Fry is on it first. Number nine hitter, Hunter Mufeld, will step in. Timeout on the field is Paul Farrell heads to the mound. Back second. No, Paul does. Rams got the scoring started with one in the first. Ryan answered with two to grab a two to one lead. Golden Bears added a third run in the bottom of the second to grab a three one lead. Tenora added a run in the third to close the gap to three to two, which is where we are now. Three to two, Ryan, bottom of the third. Golden Bears have the bases loaded with two outs and number nine hitter Hunter Mufeld will be stepping in against Cooper Farrell. Games. An hour and 10 minutes old. Lady Rams actually played an entire softball game in about 55 minutes earlier this season versus Edgerton. Like the quickest game ever. That was a full seven inning game. Lady Rams beat Edgerton, I think it was two to nothing. That was one of those tournament tune-up games. GMC well represented in girls softball this season. Pitch to Mufeld, first pitch swinging, little shallow fly ball into right field. Connor Wolfram comes in to put it away to retire the Golden Bears and hold the lead at three to two. In the inning for Brian, they threaten, do not score, no runs for Brian. One hit, one ram air, three Golden Bears left on the pond. Top of the fourth we go here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Brian, three. Sonora, two. We'll be back right after this on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad, 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Sumter Field here in Bryan, Ohio. 3-2. Golden Bears on top of the Tenora Rams. For Tenora, 8-9 and then the top. Owen Farrell, Connor Welling, and then Mason McQuillan. Face. Actually, a new pitcher for Brian. Cade. I think it's Cade Carlin. So Carlin will come in from center field and be your new pitcher for Brian. And we'll try and get the changes. Kepler goes to third. So Kepler's now at third. Carlin comes in from center to take the mound. Cole Uran goes from left to center. Thanks to Brady Clark for that. Does a fantastic job. Helping out. Reporting on games for us around Williams County, so we appreciate Brady for helping out. So Uran goes from left to center. Carlin comes from center to the mound. Kepler goes from the mound to third base. Owen Farrell is going to step in. Farrell was robbed of a base hit. And Noah Heward turned that into a double play. Carlin winds up his first pitch to Farrell. Low, ball one. 
75 for Carlin on that heater. Top of the fourth, Rams trail 3-2. Pitch, Carlin, strike called 77 on the gun. Count even that, a ball on the strike. Coming freshman Owen Farrell. Bats from the right side, 1-1 one, one pitch to Owen. Laced in the center field for a hit. Farrell smashes it. Off of Carlin. Third hit for the Rams. Going to bring up Connor Welling, the number nine here. Welling. Hey, right side, Hunter. Was hit by a pitch and stole the base in the second. So Owen Farrell on at first. Connor Welling at the plate. Nobody out. Rams trail by one as they bat here in the top of the fourth. Pitches, ball one. Of course, when you're in Brian, or heading through Brian, he's got to hit Sonic for some quick eats on the way home. Throw over to first base. Farrell back ahead of the tag. Action in the Rams' bullpen. I think that's Mason McQuillan. We'll find out if the hat flies off. <laughs> 1-0 pitch coming to Welling. Welling smashes it in the left field for a solid base hit. Stopping a second is Owen Farrell. Back-to-back -back smashes by the Rams. Put runners at first and second. Bring up top of the lineup. I guess it's not Mason because Mason will be batting. So it's not Mason warming up down there. Actually, maybe Connor Wolfram. I think Connor's warming up, yes. Rams right, current right fielder, Connor Wolfram, warming up in the bullpen down there. Mason McQuillan steps in. Mason was hit by a pitch, stole the base and scored a run in the first. Pitch, little blooper in the center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Owen Farrell hits third. He's going to try and score. Farrell scores to tie the game. Three straight singles by the Rams have tied it here in the top of the fourth inning. So Mason with an RBI single. Connor Welling trucked all the way over to third. Still nobody out. Runners at the corners. That's going to bring up Alex Homeyer. So the faster that the Golden Bears throw, the Rams seem to be putting the more bat on the ball. Three hits. Here to start the fourth, the Rams had two hits coming in. Throw over to first base, back safely is McQuillan. Carlin comes set. There goes the runner, throw back to the pitcher. McQuillan down to second on the uncontested stolen base. So Mason. Two steals here. Second and third now for Tenora. No balls and a strike. The count to Alex Omeyer. Alex had an RBI single in the first and had a single and a quarter run in the third. Carlin's pitch, check swing by Homeyer. So he did not swing. He was the count of the ball and a strike. It was 85 degrees to start here on your David Frank weather forecast. It's down to 83, but the more important part, most of the humidity seems to have left the air. Similar to the last evening. Carlin's 1-1 coming. That's low. Nice stop by Malanga. Actually lost it for a split second. And Dom finds it. Well, it's kind of be right behind him and between him and the umpire. And take Dom long to spot it. Holding the runners at second and third. 2-1 pitch from Carlin coming to Homeyer. Steps off, fakes it through the third. Connor Welling went straight too far off. Coach Wittick down there, <laughs> make sure of that. Welling leads from third, McQuillan leads from second. Carlin, 2-1 pitch to the plate. A little bit low, ball three. Admiral Spicella is on deck for Tenora. We are tied at three here in the top of the fourth. 3-5-2 for Tenora, 3-3-1 three, three for Bryant. Carlin's 3-1 coming. 
It's a great call on the outside corner to Alex Holmeyer. Holmeyer. Betting in the second spot for the Rams, playing at third base. Carlin comes set. 3-2 pitch coming to Holmeyer. Check swing, ball four. It's going to load him up. Holmeyer down to first base. He will join McQuillan, who's at second, and Wellings at third. Adam Spicella going to step in, chance to give the Rams the lead. They're tied at three. Here in pool play, third baseman for Brian Kepler's in. First pitch swing and hits it right at Kepler. Kepler fires wide of Malanga. The ball heads to the backstop. That scores Welling. Runners were straight way off. Actually, nice also by Malanga to just allow the one run to score. That was Connor Welling. Ground ball to third by Spicella. Throw home by Kepler was wide. So Spicella reaches on the air. Mm. It's going to leave the bases loaded. McQuillan's at third. Holmeyer's at second. Spicella's on at first. Grady Gusweiler comes to bat with the bases loaded and nobody out. Throw off. Oh, <laughs> a little better throw over there. I think Bassett had a chance to put the tag on Spicella. Bases full of Rams. Nobody out. Infield in. The corners. Pitch to Gus Weiler. Misses. Ball one. Rams now lead four to three. They scored two here in the fourth. Still have the bases loaded with nobody out. Center fielder number four hitter Grady Gus Weiler at the dish. 1-0 pitch. Carlin's pitch inside ball two. DJ Morlock on deck for Tenora. Carlin pitching out of the set position with the bases loaded. 2-0 pitch to Grady. Strike on the low outside corner. Two balls and a strike to Gus Weiler. Grady be a senior in the fall. Grady's ready to kick it off. Interesting to see what Grady can do in the Rams backfield this year. Pitches strike two on the high outside corner. I don't think Grady thought so, or myself, or anybody around the home plate area that's a Ram fan thought that was a strike. Two balls and two strikes to Gus Weiler. Bases full of Rams, nobody out. Carlin comes set, steps off. Be back here tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Rams play Napoleon. Napoleon and Snorter both 1-0. Grady, don't tap her back to the pitcher. Throw home, forces out McQuillan for the first out. So Gus Weiler, fielder's choice, 1-2 on the put out for the first out. So Grady's down at first. Spicella goes to second. Holmeyer goes to third. And I'm bringing up B.J. Morlock. So Morlock steps in with the bases loaded and one out now. Carlin comes set. Righty's pitch to Morlock. Strike on the outside corner. No balls and one strike to B.J. Morlock. B.J. be a senior this incoming fall. I remember watching these kids in Little League football <laughs> and baseball. It seems like yesterday. 0-1 pitch from Carlin to Morlock. Low count evens a ball and a strike. The Delta was originally in the tournament, dropped out. So the Rams got the win yesterday with the forfeit. So Tenor technically is 1-0 in the tournament, along with Napoleon. Ground ball, deep shortstop. Hewitt has the ball go through his legs. One run's going to score. And that's going to be it. Just one run. I don't think Hewitt is going to have a play regardless. Well, infield single for Morlock. This is a single regardless for Morlock. Holmeyer scores to give the Rams a 5-3 lead. Spicella goes down to third. Gus Weiler down to second. And BJ's on at first. Bases full of Rams still. One out. Peters to the plate. 
to an RBI for BJ. Carlin comes set. First pitch to Peters. Strike called to Riley. Rams trailed three to two into this inning. Now lead five to three. Still have a chance to do some more damage. Bases full of Rams with just one out. Riley Peters at the dish. Carlin comes set. Cade looks back at the runner. Now fires to the plate. Check swing by Peters. It's a ball. Count evens the ball, a strike. Thanks for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Keith Brown, solo. Soon to be joined by Coach Fairchild, Dr. AJ, and Logan this fall. Friday night football just around the corner. 1-1. One, one. Swung on and miss. Peters down the count of ball and a strike. First game. We'll be at home versus Larity Center. A lot of big graduation last year for LLC. Heck of a run Tigers made, but replaced a lot of their offense. One, two pitch to Peters by Carlin. Check swing, count. Two balls and two strikes now to Riley Peters. Sumter Field over here in Bryan. Beautiful facility. As I said, my all-time favorite. If I ever get a chance to tell you the story from 2014, I haven't forgot about it. Just haven't had a chance. Carlos 2-2 two, two to Peters. Just outside. Count goes full. 3-2. and two. Huge part of the way to the Rams. Eventual state championship in 2014. Actually started over here. It's almost derailed. Believe it or not. Early. 3-2 pitch, payoff pitch, bases full of Rams. Peters laces it into left field for a base hit. Not there, not there. hit Gonna that. Bring in one. Scoring is Adam Spicella, RBI single by Riley Peters. Peters smashed it into left field for a single. Grady stops at third. Morlock stops at second. Riley is on at first. Rams have batted around. Connor Wolfram will be the ninth batter to bat. Here in the fourth inning, Rams lead 6-3, to three, the seventh hit for Tenora. Six runs, seven hits, two errors for Tenora. Three runs, three hits, two errors for Bryant. Wolfram steps in, walked in the second, flew out to left in the third. And at the time, that was the hardest hit ball we've seen. Through three innings was the line shot by Wolfram into the arms at the time. Cole Uran in left field. Carlin's first pitch to Wolfram swings and fouls it off for the Rams dugout on the first base side out of play. No balls and one strike to the Rams senior right fielder, Connor Wolfram. Carlin comes set. Pitch coming to Connor outside, bolt one. One ball, one strike, just one out. Rams have tallied four, still have the bases loaded with just the one out. That's why they were at third, Morlock at second, Peters at first, Wolfram at the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch. Going. To the backstop it goes. Malanga couldn't get up high enough to grab it, hit the tip of his glove. Scoring is Grady Gusweiler on the wild pitch. Five runs ascending for Tenora. They now lead seven to three. Yes. Owen Farrell on deck. Yeah. Yeah. Owen started this mess with a line shot single. 2-1 pitch by Carlin. Swung on and missed. Head high fastball. Connor couldn't resist. Actually, he's probably about eight inches above Connor's head. Like a beach ball coming in there. Connor swung and missed. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. One out, bases full of Rams. They lead seven to three. Two two pitch coming from Carlin to Wolfram. Little shallow fly ball into left field. In comes the left fielder to put it away. For the second out, Wolfram just put the bat on the ball. Tried to sneak it in there. Couldn't do so. Lazarus Lane. Came on to put it away. Owen Farrell steps in. 
Bases full of Rams. Farrell started this mess. First pitch to Owen is high and inside. Ball one. Owen singled and scored earlier this inning. The 10th Ram to bat here in the top of the fourth. Carlin pitches out of the windup. The base is loaded. Farrell swings and misses. One ball, one strike. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Owen Farrell. That's from the right side. Playing shortstop. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Farrell. Leans him back. Two balls and a strike. Connor Welling on deck for Tenora. Cade Carlin steps off. Goes down the back side of the hill. Comes back on top. Gets on the rubber. Do one pitch coming to Cooper Farrell. Or <laughs> Owen Farrell. Oh, Owen yeah. skies into the foul territory. First base side. Bassett over there. Gives way to the right fielder. Elijah Fry puts it away to retire the Rams. That's a F9. Rams send 10 to the plate here in the fourth. And they do some heavy damage. Five runs for the Tenor Rams. They do so with five hits. No errors. Rams leave them loaded. Three left on. Eight left on base through four for Tenora. But we are through three and a half here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Tenora leading Brian seven to three. We'll be back right after this on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The Law Office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here, we got a new pitcher, Connor Wolfram, is in for Tenora. <laughs> that usually is a slew of changes. So Cooper Farrell goes from the mound to behind the plate. B.J. Morlock goes from behind the plate to third base. Shortstop is still Owen Farrell. Second base is Alex Homeyer. Peters is at first. Spicello's in left. Gus Weiler's in center. And Mason McQuillan, I believe, goes out to right field. So, so Connor Wolfram is on the mound. Cooper Farrell goes behind the plate. Holmeyer goes from third base to second. Morlock goes from behind the plate. I'm doing this because I'm writing it all down as I'm saying it. Morlock goes from behind the plate to third base. And Aquilin goes from second to right field. Spicella, Gus Weiler, and McQuillan is your Ram outfield. Infield, Peters at first, Holmeyer at second, Owen Farrell at short, and Morlock's at third. Battery is now Connor Wolfram and Cooper Farrell. And he will face first one right back through the box. Lead off single by Noah Heward. I'm going to get a chance to preview the Golden Bears. They have one, two, and three coming up. Heward, Iran, and Lazarus Lane. But Heward sent the first pitch by Connor Wolfram right back through the mound. I think Connor may even got a glove on it. But Heward with the smash single to start the Golden Bears bottom of the fourth as they lead, or they trail seven to three to the Tenor Rams. Cole Iran steps in. First pitch by Wolfram off the glove of Farrell. Down to second base goes Sheward. Almost a pass ball on Farrell. He ran with a hit by pitch. Stolen base and scored a run in the first. He struck out swinging in the second. So Cole officially 0 for 1. 
Runner a second. Wolfram from the set. Ground ball to short. Farrell fires over to first base just in time to nip your end. Nice hustle. That's one of those high bouncers. Time Farrell got it. He rifled over there to first base just in time to get your end for the first out. Lazarus Lane will step in. Lane 0 for 2 as he comes to bat here in the fourth inning. Lane started at third base, moved to left field last inning with the pitching change. Going over to third base on the fielder's choice was Noah Hewitt. So Hewitt's at third. Pitch to Lane is foul back, strike one. 7-3, Rams on top, courtesy of that five-run fourth inning. Game is about 90 minutes old. Ground ball, second base side. Holmeyer up with it, lobs it over to Peters in time to get Lane for out number two. Scoring from third with the Bears' fourth run is Noah Heward. It's an RBI by Lazarus Lane. 4-3 on the putout as the wind picks up. There's a gust flew through here. Chase Kepler steps in. Kepler started on the mound. He's the cleanup hitter for Brian. Base is empty. Two outs. First pitch. Drive right field. Coming in as McQuillan. Can't make the play. Bobbles it. Kepler's going to try for second. Head first dive into second. Ball goes down the left field line. Kepler's going to try and score. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Kepler with a Little League inside the park home run. Basically a single for Kepler. Error on the throw by McQuillan. McQuillan air mailed it over second base down the left field line, basically in the bullpen area for the Golden Bears. A lot of times Spicella headed over there. Kepler already was on his way home and beat the throw. Damian Wolf steps in. Wolf 0 for 2. Reached on an error in the third. First pitch swinging, taps it foul. First base side. So just like that, seven to five. Spotty defense by the Rams here. Has contributed to the two runs. Wolfram comes set. Pitch. Wolf spins out of the way, but it's called a strike. Nice breaking ball by Connor Wolfram. Wolfram works strictly out of the set position. No runners on. Connor still works from the set. Some pitchers do. 0-2 pitch, heads to the backstop. One ball and two strikes now to Damian Wolf. Landon Bassett on deck for Brian. We said back here tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Rams play Napoleon. Napoleon defeated Brian last night 9-1. They are 1-0. Rams 1-0 courtesy of a forfeit. Swung on and missed by Wolf. Strikeout by Wolfram for out number three. First strikeout for Connor. In the inning for Brian, they hit for two runs. They do so on two base hits. One huge error for the Rams. Nobody left on base. Top of the fifth we go over here at Sumter Field on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Sonora seven and Brian five. We'll be back right after this on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams!
Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events, broadcast on YouTube, and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. All right, back here, top of the fifth we go. Changes a slew for Brian as well, similar to the Rams. For Tenora, we'll get to those here in a split second. Top of the fifth for Tenora, eight, nine, and one. Owen Farrell, Connor Welling, and Mason McQuillan. Too bad against the new pitcher for Brian. And that will be Noah Heward. Heward comes in from short to be the third pitcher for Brian to work here. Rams with one in the first, one in the third, five in the fourth for their seven. Seven runs, seven hits, three errors for Tenora for Brian. Two in the first, one in the second, two in the fourth for their five. Five, four, and two for Brian. Camden Burkowski behind the plate for the Golden Bears. Stepping in for Tenora. Is Connor Welling. First pitch is a ball. Second pitch fouled back. One ball and one strike to Connor Welling. Last inning, the Rams sent 10 to the plate. Scored five runs. Welling with a single and a run scored. Heward winds it up. 1-1 one, one pitch to Welling. Swung on and missed. Strike two. 77 on the radar one right here. Come on. for Noah Heward. Kepler moved from third to short. Lane back from left to third base. Fouled back. One ball and two strikes. It remains. And Carlin went from the mound back to center field. Irene is now back in left. So thanks to Brady again for all those changes. Keeping me up to date up here. Pitch just misses, low and away. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Brady does a fantastic job. Brady Clark. Very active on Twitter. Does a great job reporting scores from the Williams County area. Pitch is fouled off first base side. Little tapper off the bat. Of Connor Welling. Welling batting ninth, Rams DH. Top lineup, Mason McQuillan on deck. High drive, left center field back there is Carlin to put it away. Welling gave it a drive right at Carlin here in the top of the fifth inning. F8 on the deep fly out by Welling. Top lineup, Mason McQuillan. McQuillan hit by a pitch, stole the base, scored a run in the first, grounded back to pitcher in the second, and had an RBI single in the fourth. First pitch to Quillen as a strike from Noah Heward. We said Heward, the third pitcher to work here for Brian. Heward hey, right side. fires it in, fouled back. No balls and two strikes quickly ahead of Mason McQuillan. O2, McQuillan fouls it back. <laughs> Ricochets off of the backstop pole and almost landed into the Rams dugout. Almost like a line drive. Heward with a little compact windup. O2 pitch coming to McQuillan. High and away. One ball and two strikes to the Rams. Now right fielder Mason McQuillan. Fouled off again. But anyways, back in 2014, when I finally get to it, Rams eventually state champions in 2014. Actually trailed here to Hicksville. I think the score was 7-6. to six. Basically, the Rams were down to their last strike and were trailing to Hicksville. 1-2 pitch coming. Outside, two balls and two strikes. 
And I think Reverend Renault started the rally with a little infield single. Rams tied it up and eventually won it in the bottom of the seventh inning, but the Rams were one strike away from going home in that 2014 championship season. Heward fires, McQuillan swings and misses. McQuillan heads to the bench, down on strikeouts, first strikeout for Heward. Alex Holmeyer steps in. Holmeyer with an RBI single in the first. Singled and scored in the third. Walked and scored in the fourth. So Holmeyer all over the place here today. Offensively. Got this game on YouTube. If anybody wants to go back and watch it, we'll upload it tonight. Sometimes it takes two hours. Sometimes it takes six. Depends on my upload speed. I'm not sure what the deal is. That pitch is inside ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Holmeyer. Two zero pitch, strike called unless my hotspot actually gives us a good 1080 HD. Two and one, two outs, bases empty. Rams on top, seven five as they bat here in the top of the fifth. Heward winds it up. Two one pitch coming to Holmeyer. Stays high and away. Ball three, three balls and a strike. Chris Wittick coaching at third. Paul Farrell coaching at first over here at Sumter Field. Three one inside. Two out walk. Alex Holmeyer trots down the first base. Going to bring up the number three hitter, Adam Spicella. Spicella scored in the fourth. One of the five runs put on the board by Tenor in the fourth inning. Throw over. Almost had Holmeyer leaning. Alex back safely. Another throw over. Back standing just ahead of the throw is Omeyer. Almost got picked off. Yikes. You were come set. Pitch to the plate. It's just outside ball two. Two ball, or one ball, and no strikes. Two outs, runner at first for Tenora. They lead by 2-7-5 here in the top of the fifth. Just after the 6-30 hour. No Another throw over to first, and oh Holmeyer, kind of like a cat with nine lives over there. Back just ahead of the throw, I guess. Heward. Thought he had him, so did the first base, Landon Bassett, for the Golden Bears. Their big lead again for Homeyer. Heward comes set, comes to the plate. Ground ball, third base sides. One hop fired over there is Kepler to retire. Adam Spicella. 5 3 on the put out for the Rams. No runs, no hits, no errors, and continue with the trend. The Rams strand the runner. The Rams have stranded nine through five. Well, they lead seven to five as we head to the bottom of the fifth here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Firestone Tavern and Drop Zone Pizzeria having a pizza shootout. 
which we'll have more of that in our fall ads. Firestone Tavern, best burgers last year, best burgers this year, I believe. Trap Zone Pizzeria. I believe they were yeah. voted, this is unofficially, of course, unofficially, kind of official. Trap Zone Pizzeria in Stryker and Ayersville voted the best pizza in the six county area. Can't go wrong with either one. Liz and Harold are longest tenured sponsored at Drop Zone Pizzeria. Special thanks to them. If you haven't tried Drop Zone Pizzeria, I highly suggest you do. Fantastic pizza, fantastic subs, fantastic wings. Like I said, many a time, sometimes you head over there, you order pizza and some breadsticks, you walk in there, Harold's got the grill going, he's got some wings, and you're like, man, stick around for some wings too? <laughs> so you head home with some pizza, breadsticks, and then all of a sudden you're heading home with wings because you can't resist that awesome smell. You still got time to order if you want to. I think they're open to eight during the week. It's only 6.30. It's not that far a drive, believe it or not, from Defiance to Ayersville. Depending on where you live, I live on the other side of town, or by Newman's Carryout in that general area, by Prometica, and it takes me about 15 minutes to get to Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville. So, in order, be back home there and back in half an hour. First pitch is a ball. Six, seven, and eight. Bassett, Carlin, and Fry to face Connor Wolfram. Yeah. Line to center field, Gus Weiler comes on. Makes a fantastic catch, I think. Or did Grady lose it? I think he caught it. I think that's gotta be an out. Bassa with the smash, Gus Weiler comes in. I mean, Grady's gonna make that play. So they're going to say Bassett with a single. So Bassett with a leadoff single. Gus Weiler come running on, and as great he does, makes one of those fantastic plays, and they're going to say he trapped it or dropped it, which I don't know that he did. Parker Hancock in for the Rams at the catcher position. Hancock was the MVP in the championship game with the Junior Acme last Friday. With a, again, congratulations to the Sonora Junior Acme state champions. 15 to four, six inning win over Fort Recovery. That was last Friday night. So congratulations to Coach Ryan Snyder and the Rams. Hancock was four for four last Friday. Scored three runs and had a double. Carter Replogle had two singles and two RBIs and two runs scored last Friday. So Rams' future very promising for Coach Renolette and Coach Tipton. Wolfram comes set. Pitch to Carlin is inside. Ball one. 7-5, Rams lead by two. Golden Bears with the runner at first. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth over here at beautiful Sumter Field. Squares around the bunt, bunts through the balls. Ball two, two balls and no strikes. To Kate Carlin. Carlin struck out looking in the first and singled in the third. Batting seventh, and I think he's Back to center field. Came in the pitch for an inning. That pitch is a strike. Came in the pitch in the fourth. The Rams scored five runs, and believe it or not, he was hitting the upper 70s mark. It's like the faster the Golden Bears threw, the better the Rams hit. Wolfram comes set. Pitch swung on. Hit down the right field side. Foul. McQuillan giving chase. That ball is out of play. And in typical Mason McQuillan fashion, cap goes flying. Somebody get Mason some of that insulation you put around your windows in the winter, like that thin insulation. You can actually put it on the inside of your cap, and it makes the cap smaller. <laughs> I said they bought many caps on eBay. Collector's caps are just a size too big. Put some of that insulation tape on the inside, and it actually works wonders. 
Line drive just over the head of second baseman Holmeyer. McQuillan fires in to second base. But not before Bassett beats the throw. So back-to-back -back singles for Brian to have runners at first and second. And nobody out. Carlin at first, Bassett at second. That bring up the number eight hitter. Elijah Fry. Fry walked, stole the base, and scored in the second. Walked in the third. 7 5 Rams here in the bottom of the fifth, and that's looking a little iffy right now. Two runners on, nobody out for the Golden Bears. Fry swings and misses. Strike one. Wind picks up again. Fry's kind of wrapped around the pole out there now. Wolfram comes to the plate. Fry bunts a foul. First base side. Hancock goes over there, scoops it up. Fires it back to Connor Wolfram. Peters at first. Holmeyer at second. Uh, Owen Farrell still a short. Morlock now at third. Outfield Spicella in left. Gus Weiler in center. And McQuillan in right. Scorebook looks like a fifth grader scribbled in it. Liner, soft liner into right field. McQuillan comes on, fields it on one hop, fires into the plate. Hancock knocks it down, but that's going to load the bases for the Golden Bears. Bassett's at third, Carlin is at second, and Fry, three straight singles, have loaded them up for the Golden Bears for the number nine hitter, Hunter Mufeld. Actually, we have a pinch hitter for Mufeld. Try and get that here in a second. First pitch swinging, high fly ball, shallow left field. Spicella underneath it, puts it away to retire. The pinch hitter for Brian. F7, one out. Base is still full of Golden Bears. And now one out. Top of the lineup. Noah Heward steps in. <laughs> Heward hit by pitch from the first. Single and scored a run in the fourth. Pitch to Heward as a strike. Just misses on the outside corner. One ball, one strike, one out. Bases full of Golden Bears. Rams lead 7-5 here in the bottom of the fifth. Here in pool play. Rams 1-0. Golden Bears 0-1. Wolfram comes set. Pitch inside off the glove of Hancock. Ricochets in front of the plate. Parker scoops it up. Fires it back to Wolfram. Two balls and one strike to the Golden Bears leadoff hitter, Noah Heward. 68 on his throwback looking jersey. Wolfram's pitch, ground ball in the hole. Nice play by Owen Farrell. Gets the runner out at, at third for a force out. Scoring on the play, however, was Bassett. So Bassett cuts the lead to seven to six. That's an RBI by Heward on the fielder's choice. He's on at first base. Nice play by Owen Farrell. 6-5 on that put out for out number two. Number two hitter, Cole Uran steps in. Uran, that's the win. <laughs> just worry about stuff flying out the window again. Pitch is a strike. <laughs> number one, my camera. <laughs> Hey, Runners at first and second for Brian. Two outs now. He ran at the dish. Nice backhand play there by Parker Hancock. One ball, one strike. Pitch just misses. Two balls and a strike. Elijah Fry's at second. Noah Heward's on at first for Brian. Cut the lead to seven to six here in the bottom of the fifth. Two one pitch from Connor Wolfram to Uran. Just misses inside. Count goes to three and one to Cole Uran. Scored in the first. 
set by a pitch. Stole the base and the score. Struck out, swinging in the second. Down to short in the fourth. 3-1 pitch from Wolfram to Uran. Fouls it back. Count goes full. Three and two. Like I said, with Delta dropping out, pool play over here will go with the best record. And if there's a tie, go to runs allowed. So right now, Tenora and the point are both 1-0. Brian is 0-1. Last night, Rams via forfeit picked up a win over Delta. And... Ryan defeated by Napoleon, 9 to 1. Payoff pitch by Wolfram, strike three called. Uran, as Ernie Harwell would have said, stood there like the house aside the road and watched that one go by. In the inning, for Ryan, put another tally on the board. Score one run. Three hits, no Ram errors, two left on base. Brian has left eight on base. We're through five over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Throw our Rams seven, and Brian Golden Bears six. We'll be back after this brief timeout on your drop zone, Pete Serious Corboard. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Boosters, say go Rams. Make sure you get a hold of Dr. AJ, Dr. Kayla. Over at Fairchild Family Chiropractic, Dr. Kayla works with infants. So if you have an infant, need some chiropractic advice, stop and see Dr. AJ and see Dr. Kayla. Okay, the 100 Stadium Drive, where's that at, you wonder? Try right across from Defiance College. By the car wash. Kind of behind Estel. This is where Kmart used to be. Fort Tenora, four, five, and six. Gus Weiler, Morlock, and Peters. To face Jace Kepler. Kepler came on last inning. Or Noah Heward, actually. Like I said, I can't. So many changes here all over the place. So Heward has this game this is a couple minutes over two hours old. wheels. So Gus Weiler steps in. First pitch swing. Right back to Kepler. Underhands it over to first base, Landon Bassett. Gus Weiler's retired. Start to ram six. One, three for the first out. Grady had a run scored in the fourth. Gonna bring up number five for BJ Morlock. BJ with an RBI single last inning. Walked in the third and grounded to second base in the first. First pitch swinging. Deep ball in shortstop. Off the shortstop's glove. We're giving field single for BJ Morlock, so that's a one out single by BJ. Actually, Carlin's back in the pitch, so Heward's back to short. Carlin's back in the pitching. Oh, my word. Peters is <laughs> back at the plate. First pitch to Riley is a strike. So Carlin comes in from center. Heward went from the mound back to short. Oh, one one pitch coming to Riley. Nice changeup, way out in front. Peters quickly down, no balls and two strikes. Riley had an RBI single in the fourth off of Cade Garland. She had an RBI in the third as well. Walked in the second, Riley did. Garland comes set, 0-2 pitch coming to Peters. More lock on at first. Low, ball one. One ball and two strikes to Riley. 
I guess it is Heward still out there at the mound. It looks just like Carlin. <laughs> so Heward still is on the mound. My apologies. It would be brothers. So no, Heward still is on the mound. One, two pitches. Heward steps off. One, two, pitch coming to Peters. Morlock leads away from first. Tap, foul, third base side. Heward runs over, scoops it up. So this one got a big chunk out of it, which it does. That one is no longer suited for play. One, two, this is the count to Riley Peters. One out. Rams lead 7-6 here as they bat in the top of the sixth inning. Over here at Sumter Field is the winds. As you can hear, still gusting around. Hewards oh, one, two to Peters. Shallow fly ball into uh, left field. Left fielder comes on, puts it away. For out number two, that was Cole Uran. So Warfarum comes to the play with two outs. Connor walked in the second and has flew out in the third and fourth to Iran and left. First pitch to Connor is outside ball one by Noah Heward. Warlock on at first, two outs now. Warfarum at the dish. Heward comes set, 1-0 pitch. Outside, off the glove of the catcher to the backstop it goes. Morlock, big turn at second. He's gonna hang on there. So BJ down to second base on the wild pitch. Catcher, Camden Borowski. Let that ball go off his glove. Tried to save it, just couldn't. 2-0 pitch to Wolfram. Connor can help himself here with the single, fouled back. Two balls and a strike. Warlock with an infield single. Went down the second on a wild pitch. He's there with two outs. Two balls and a strike to Rams' current pitcher, Connor Wolfram. Connor started in right. Came on in the relief of Cooper Farrell in the fourth. Here was 2-1. Swung on and missed. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Get out of right here. Heward from the set. Looks back at Morlock at second. 2-2 two -two pitch to Wolfram. Foul back. Count stays two balls and two strikes. Two out, 7-6 Rams, top of the sixth. Playing the play in tomorrow. And then how all this turns out, winner will advance to play at Defiance on Sunday versus the winner of the Defiance bracket. Old Tapper, third base side, just foul. Lazarus Lane fields in foul territory, foul, fires it back to Noah Heward. Wolfram comes back, picks up the bat, the home plate umpire, who kindly hands it to Connor. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second, B.J. Morlock. Rams lead by one here in the top of the sixth on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Heward's 2-2 two -two coming to Wolfram. Long look in by Heward. Finally is ready. He hurls it high and inside. Count goes full to Connor Wolfram at three and two. Payoff pitch coming to Wolfram. Slaps it foul, first base side. Wolfram stays alive. May have swung up ball four. Hey, good pitch, no, let's go get him. 
Coach Woodick says, make sure you're swinging at anything close. Coach Chris Woodick coaching at third. Head coach Paul Farrell coaching at first. 3-2 pitch from Heward to Wolfram. Inside spins him out of the way. Ball four. So Connor walks for the second time tonight. Warlock stays a second. Wolfram joins him on the base pass. Connor down at first. Going to bring up Owen Farrell. Farrell with a single and run scored in the fourth. Grounded into a double play in the sixth. Flew out to right field in the fifth. Heward steps off, fires back to second. Head first dive by Morlock, just ahead of the tag by Mufeld. Heward's pitch to Owen Farrell, strike on the outside corner. No balls and a strike to Owen. Rams have runners at first and second. They lead by one here in the top of the sixth. Two outs. Heward's 0-1 pitch to Owen Farrell. Inside ball two. Third ball one. One ball and a strike. Count evens at one and one. One one from Heward coming to Owen Farrell. Or ball two on the outside. Just missed the outside corner. Don't forget tomorrow, if you're not busy, get four of your buddies. Sign up for the Black Swamp football golf outing. Still got time. Get a hold of Lynn. $300 for a foursome. That includes lunch and two drinks. Heward steps off. Fires back to second base, and they got Morlock. BJ picked off second for out number three. That retires the Rams here in the six. For Tenor, they threaten, do not score. No runs for the Rams. One hit, no errors, and just one left after the pickoff. The Rams have left the runner on base, runner or runners on base every single inning. Bottom of the six, we go. Over here at Sumter Field and Bryan on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Tenor a seven, and the Golden Bears of Bryan, six. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here, bottom of the six. Rams lead 7-6. Three, four, and five for the Golden Bears. Lazarus Lane, Jace Kepler, and Damian Wolf face Connor Wolfram. I have finished my ad there for Black Swamp football golf outing. That's tomorrow at the Ironwood Golf Club in Wauseon. 300 bucks, get four of your buddies, call off work, go have some lunch, get some drinks, you get two drink tickets, but anyway, this urban golfing and a golf outing knows you're gonna drink more than two. <laughs> starts at 9 a.m. Registration starts at 8. Get a hold of Lynn. Just go to blackswampfootball.com. You can contact Lynn on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, Lynn Growl. Or just go to blackswampfb at gmail.com and email Lynn there. Say, hey, I want to golf. Here's my buddies. We're going to have a good time on a Friday on this messed up 4th of July week where 4th of July on a Tuesday gives you basically two Mondays during the work week. Lane, first pitch, bunch through the ball, strike one, face Connor Wolfram. <laughs> Parker Hancock still behind the plate, second inning for Parker, or third inning, actually, strike two to Lane. First baseman, we got a new first baseman for Tenora, I think that's Adam Spicella. Foul back, 
These no balls and two strikes to Lane, so Adam comes in from left to play first base. Holmeyer is still at second. Owen Farrell still at short. Morlock is at third, and I think Trent DeLarber is in left now. Fouled back by Lane. Owen two. Gus Weiler is in center, and and then right is Mason McQuillan. Wolfram comes set. 0-2 pitch, hit shortstop side, through the hole. We're actually over the bag of second. Second there, I thought Farrell had a chance. But Lane bounced it back through the middle, just out of the reach of Farrell for a lead off single to start the Golden Bear six. They trail by one here in the six, seven to six. Jace Kepler digs in. First pit, pitch coming to Jace is inside ball one. Kepler was hit by a pitch and scored in the first. Grounded to third in the third. Single and scored in the fourth. Wolfram comes set. 1-0 pitch to Kepler. Ground ball right back to Wolfram off his glove. Connor recovers to second base in time to get Lane for the force out. So out number one is one, four on the put out. Smash back to Wolfram, one hopper. Wolfram got a glove on it. Ball bounced behind him, kind of recovered. Fired a second in time to get Kepler. So Lane is out number one at second. Kepler is on at first. Damian Wolf steps in. There goes the runner. Throw by Hancock. Down to second. Goes into center field. Gus Weiler up with it. Fires at the third. Morlock puts the tag on him. Not in time. So Kepler with a stolen base. Heads to third on the throwing air by the catcher. Tying runs at third with one out. Damian Wolf is at the plate. One ball, no strikes to Wolf. Wolf 0 for 3, struck out swinging his last plate appearance. Basically, the Rams infield playing in. They're going to come home with any ball hit directly to an infielder. Wolfram comes set. Pitch outside, nice stop by Hancock. Rams, we really suicide squeeze here as Coach Renolette loves to do so much. 2-0 pitch coming to Wolf. Tap foul, home plate area. Two balls and a strike now to Damian Wolf. Connor Wolfram gets the ball back, walks down the mound, walks back up, steps on the rubber. Runner at third leads away, Jace Kepler. He's the tying run. Wolfram comes set, 2-1 pitch coming to Wolf. Sends a deep drive center field. Gusweiler underneath it, Grady puts it away. Here comes the throw home, not in time. Kepler crosses the plate, ties the game at seven. That's a sacrifice fly, RBI by Damian Wolf. <laughs> Second out. Seven runs, seven hits, three errors for Tenora. Seven runs, six hits, three errors for Bryant. Base is empty, two outs. Landon Bassett will step in. Bassett, number 70 on his Golden Bear jersey. First pitch, strike on the outside corner. Well, from come set, 0-1 pitch coming to Bassett. Inside, count evens at a ball and a strike. Come on, K-Bass. Wolfram's 1-1 one, one to Bassett. Outside, two balls and a strike. Sky, all the clouds, all the minimal clouds we have, have all cleared out. 
Nothing but blue skies and sunshine here at Sumter Field. 2-1 pitch, waved at by Bassett. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs, base is empty. Golden Bears has tied the game at seven. The single run here in the bottom of the sixth. Rams will have the bottom part of the order. Pitch to Bassett. It's ball three. Carlin on deck for Brian. Payoff pitch coming. Foul ball deep right field out of play. Bassett steps back in from the right side. One of the few that's been in this position since the start of the game. First base the entire time for Bassett. Another foul ball. This one's out of play. Deep right field. Over there where you wouldn't think it would hit a car, but that one may have hit the backside of a car. Think of backside of cars. If you ever in an auto accident, you need the best auto repair shop in Northwest Ohio. Batten Stevens in Jewel, Ohio. What a nicer family over there. Let's go. Mr. Bat. And they do a fantastic job. Most time your vehicle comes back better than when you took it to him. 3-2 pitch to Bassett. Ground ball under the glove of Morlock. Diving attempt by BJ. Could not come up with it. Bassett sneaks a two-out single under the glove of third baseman Morlock into left field for a base hit. Trent DeLarber comes in, fires it back into the infield. But the Golden Bears have the go-ahead run at first with two outs. Cade Carlin, the number seven hitter, center fielder steps in. Carlin actually had an inning on the mound. That was the fourth where the Rams scored five runs. Pitch is ball, a little bit low. One ball, no strikes, two outs, runner at first for Brian. Tied at seven. Pitch is low, nice stop by Hancock. Carlin awaits the 2 0 from Wolfram. Here it comes. Strike one called. Two balls and a strike. To Kate Carlin, Elijah Fry on deck. Two one pitch coming from Connor Wolfram to Carlin. Swung on, driven to right field. McQuillan goes back. It's over his head. Bassett hits second. Go ahead, run. Rounds third. Here comes Bassett. Throw to third. Out at third to see if the run does count. Just ahead of the out. So Bassett rounded third. He scored just ahead of the tag at third. For the third out, McQuillan had the ball go over his head, recovered, fired it back in. Throw into third base. Morlock put the tag on Carlin. About .5 seconds ahead of the tag. However, Brian, they score two runs in the inning. That was a single by Carlin. They do so on two hits. In theory, no Ram errors. Dismiss play by Mason. And nobody left. Top of the seventh we go. Last chance for the Rams. They now trail eight to seven on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard as Metallica kicks up in the background. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576 Golden Bears on top. Rams head to the top of the seventh. 
Nine, one, and two. Face Noah Heward. And Coach Becker, if you're listening, make sure you have this song play when the Rams head over the field this year, please. <laughs> Owen <laughs> Farrell steps in, grounded into a double play in the second. Single and scored in the fourth and flew out to right field in the fifth. First pitch by Heward to Farrell is a ball. Heward trying to pick up the win in relief. Golden Bears rallying from a 7 3 deficit, now leads 8 7. Rams with that five spot. Grabbed a 7-3 lead. Golden Bears then follow with 2-1-2. Two, two, five runs in the last three innings for Bryan. Pitches ball two. This pitch is ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Owen Farrell. Connor Welling on deck. Farrell squares around the bunt just for distraction purposes. Takes a strike. Three balls and a strike. Probably has a take sign on this one as well. Although... Farrell with a line shot single in the fourth. Looked really looked, uh, really nice there. 3 1 pitches. Strike two called. Our toes, D. Our toes. Hit a spot. Come on, kick. 3 2 by Heward to Owen Farrell. Pop foul out of play. Thing about Owen is going to have to wait a season to play because we got Caden Radzik as the Rams shortstop. Job sewn up another season. So Owen will have that thing anchored down as a sophomore, so Owen will have three years at the shortstop position for Coach Renolette and the Rams in the future. That was a fantastic spring. 3 2 pitch, swung on, line shot right at the shortstop, one hop, throw across in time. One out. Farrell hit it right on the nose. Unfortunately, ran at the shortstop. 6 3 on the put out. That's Jace Kepler at short. Everything in front of you. You were just pitched to Welling. Strike call. 8 7. Brian on top. One out here in the top of the seventh. Rams down to the last two outs. Base is empty. Pitch to Welling. That's outside. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Thanks for joining us here on Tonight Rams Live on this Thursday. We'll be back here tomorrow versus Napoleon. Five o'clock start. Strike call on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes to the Rams DH. Connor Welling. Welling in the number nine slot. Get one yourself here. One, two, pitch. Swung on and miss. Down goes Welling. How number two. Top of the lineup, Mason McQuillan. Can't call it a little. Can't thank Coach Walker enough. The staff over here, Brian. Fantastic job over here. Thanks to Brady Clark for helping me out. Some of the some of the change. Most of the changes for Brian. Quillen steps in. First pitch to Mason. Outside, ball one. Mason was hit by a pitch, stole a base, and scored in the first. Crowned in the, back to the pitcher in the second. Has an RBI single in the fourth and struck out in the fifth. Fifth plate appearance Honor. for Mason McQuillan. Honor, little range. Started little range. the second, moved to right. Got two. In the fifth. Pitch is outside, ball two. Alex Holmeyer. Waits on deck. Alex has been on base every single plate appearance. All right, all the way back. Come on. Cool ass for time. Did not get it. It was ball three. Three zero pitch coming to. McQuillan from Hewer, that's high and away, ball four. So McQuillan has worked a two-out walk. Mason trots down to first base. Gives Mason a chance to get in the scoring position. Left side almost every time. Throw over McQuillan back safely. He 
Stewart comes set. First pitch to Holmeyer's a strike, as we said. Alex has been on base every single time. RBI single in the first. Singled and scored in the third. Walked and scored in the fourth. And walked in the fifth. Pitch to Holmeyer. Strike two called. He worked quickly ahead of Holmeyer. No balls. Two strikes. Two outs. Tying run for Tenora's Mason McCool in the first. Holmeyer digs in. Throw over. Nice play over there by Bassett. That was a one hopper. That was just a couple centimeters away from heading down the right field line. Hewards 0-2 pitch coming. There goes McQuillan. Holmeyer sends it in the gap. Center fielder comes over and makes a diving catch. Cade Carlin just won it for Brian. Holmeyer sent one in the gap, left center field. Carlin on his horse as McQuillan was trying to steal. Took the game tying run off the surface here at Sumter Field. F8 on the put out. Nice play by center fielder Cade Carlin for Tenora in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Final from Sumter Field here in Bryan. Bryan eight, Tenora seven. And we'll be back and recap it as best we can right after this brief time out. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back here at Sumter Field, Brian with an 8-7 win. Cade Carlin saved the day for the Golden Bears. Eight runs. For Brian. Two in the first, one in the second, two in the fourth, one in the fifth, and two in the sixth for Brian. Nine hits for the Golden Bears. They committed three errors. For Tenora, seven runs, one in the first, one in the third, five in the fourth. Rams at one time had a 5 3 lead. Rams left the runner on base. Every time but that final seventh inning. Ten runners stranded for Tenora. Eight runs for Tenora. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back here tomorrow where the Rams will battle the Napoleon Wildcats at 5 o'clock. Until then, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Back here at Sumter Field, the winner will advance, well, We'll, we'll figure it all out tomorrow. <laughs> this is a big mess with Delta dropping out. But everybody, have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action. And follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.